I've mentioned on previous videos that I have a real interest in learning more about the relationship between Canada and the United States of America. Of course these countries are neighbours so they share a lot of similarities uh, but today we're going to be looking at differences. We're going to be looking at 25 funny differences between Canadians and Americans. So I'm guessing this is looking at the people themselves and how they are different. What I'm also interested to know because this video is going to be showing the differences, I'm interested to know from people from Canada and America, what similarities there are also. Of course, things like language and things are to, are a given, but tell me what interesting similarities are between these two cultures that people might not usually think of. And let's watch this one and we'll find out the differences also. Let's check it out. Canada and the US have somewhat of a love-hate relationship. It's a sibling rivalry that goes back centuries. So, so just to start on that, that initial little mon part of his monologue, it actually sounds so similar to my country, Scotland and England. We have this love-hate relationship. It goes back a long, long time, maybe even longer, where we fought wars and things throughout history. But the people themselves are very similar. And at heart, I would hope we, we love each other. I think that's probably the same for Canada and America. Tell me if that's a fair a fair analysis. Canada and the US have somewhat of a love-hate relationship. It's a sibling rivalry that goes back centuries. So what exactly are the differences between the two? Today, we're going to take a look at how the longest unprotected border in the world has defined North America. I'm, I'm Mike with List25, and these are 25 funny differences between Canadians and Americans. I think the fact that the border is unprotected shows you how much of a strong relationship Canada and America have. I mean, if you look at the other side of America, where Donald Trump was trying to build a wall and try and keep people out, the fact that it's unprotected and people are, are allowed to basically travel freely, it just shows the strength of that relationship. I really like that. Again, if I to compare to Scotland and England, we have, a, we have no border at all. We can go and come and go as we please. As much as Scotland wants to become independent, where things might change at the moment, it's quite okay. Twenty-five. Canadians tend to trust authority, whereas Americans are suspicious of it. This goes back to the fact that the Canadians remained loyal to the crown, while America showed King George the door. Hmm. Yeah, I've never thought about that as well. So. Yeah, you, obviously things like that with people's attitude, it really shapes people's attitude. That's hundreds of years of thing, like wars and things like that going on uh, for America. It makes them untrustworthy of uh, authority, but Canad Canadians, it seems, according to this person, have, a, have respect for authority. So it just shows you how history can shape people's current attitudes, which I've never really thought so deeply about before, but it kind of makes sense. Tell me if that's true for all Canadians. Are all, I'm sure all Canadians can't be respectful of authority, same way all Americans can't be disrespectful to authority. But yeah, just an interesting thing that I hadn't considered. 24. Before, Canadians bond over hockey. Americans bond over football. In general, Canadians also put less emphasis on sports. Canadians put less, less emphasis on sports. Yeah, that, that's an interesting one as well. I, I know that hockey is obviously so popular in Canada. I have become a huge hockey fan on my other channel where I've been making hockey reactions. It's an absolutely amazing, exciting sport. Uh, but of course, like hockey is synonymous with Canada, football is synonymous with the USA. But like American football, NFL, is that popular in Canada as well? Like other Canadian, uh, other like um, USA uh, centric sports, are they very popular? I know, I think Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship a couple of years ago. So, but how popular are those, like that big, those big sports in the USA in Canada? 23. Canadians spend a lot of time comparing themselves to the US. Americans don't think about Canada very often at all. Actually, Almost never. I love you, Ken. And all my Canadian friends. This is in jest, dear God. 20 yeah, I think that one must be in jest. I'm sure Canadians, from my interactions with Canadians through this channel, I, I don't get that, that they would ever really care that much about like American culture, like being American or want to be like that. 
Uh, they seem fiercely proud and they should be because Canada is an amazing country from what I've learned. It's got such a good quality of life, great education, great healthcare. Like they've got a lot of things that you might think in the USA they don't actually have. So I would actually imagine that if Americans were more open-minded, they would actually want to be more like Canada than Canada would like to be like America, if that makes sense. Me too. Some parts of Canada sell milk in bags. Bagged milk would be highly suspicious in the US. I'd totally drink it. Milk's great. Best say, beverage. Oh, uh, no, absolutely. No, milk is fantastic. Milk is the best beverage in the world. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it comes in chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I actually don't like chocolate as much. That's weird. I prefer white. I can do it. I prefer, oh, 20. I mean, I just took it for granted that everybody loved milk apart from people who had like health issues with uh, with dairy products and things like that. But the bag of milk is something I've seen come up in a lot of videos now. And some people in the comments have told me it's actually not as popular or common as it's made out in these videos. So tell me more about that. I've already mentioned that you get in Asia, you get your drinks served in bags quite often. Uh, but I don't really see any difference with it uh, compared to like a carton or a like a plastic bottle. It wouldn't make any difference to me. I usually just go for like fresh milk and look at the price, if it's reasonably priced. If it made it cheaper to come in a bag, I'll definitely buy that. I wouldn't have anything against anyone. How it's the US packaged. sees itself as a melting pot. That was a good restaurant. While Canada sees itself as a mosaic. Mm. The difference is very slight, but basically in the US, there's more mixing and blending between immigrant cultures. While in Canada, immigrants tend to keep more of their language and traditions rather than mix with others. Mm. Someone, I, I have actually seen someone made that comment in one of my videos. USA is more like a melting pot when it comes to immigrants. Canada is like a mosaic. And you know what? I don't have a problem with either. I think actually both of them are, both of them can have benefits. You know, like if people in Canada, for instance, where it's a mosaic, want to keep a hold of their language, languages and heritage and be proud of that. I think that's fair enough. Uh, I'm a foreigner in another country and I'm proud to be Scottish and keep my Scottish traditions and to tell people about them and so on. Uh, but with regards to the American way of life for immigrants where they blend cultures and become like more American, if that's what it means, uh, both of them are uh, totally acceptable. Tell me if you think, if you see that as the real, if you see these in practice in the, both of these countries and tell me if you think any of the, those kind of ways of life are more beneficial or better than the other for any reason. 20. Canadians have more of a tall poppy syndrome, which is a tendency to distrust or discredit anyone who stands out in a prominent position or wealth. In this sense, Canada is a lot more like Europe. Conformity is more encouraged in Canada than in the US. If America does well at anything, it's encouraging innovation and non-conformity. 19. Hmm. Is that true? I never knew that was the case. Uh, I guess breaking from norms is a good way to create in, or to encourage innovation and things like that. But that says a lot about, I, I feel like a thing like that is quite hard to generalize a full country in that, that way. Tell me if that is a fair reflection on Canada. Uh, again, he said similar to Europe, I feel like with that point, you can't really generalize full regions or countries. Uh, but tell me what you think about that one. Canadians love their flag, but Americans seem to love their flag more. Seriously, nobody beats America at flags. You can't beat Canadians at maple syrup though. I mean, I don't know if that's like a deeper point about pride in their country, or if it's just a basic thing about the actual flag itself. Of course I see things in movies and TV shows about America and you always see these like these smaller towns and southern regions where everybody's got like a, an American flag on their porch and things like that. Uh, tell me if Canada has that as well, if they have that real pride in the flag. But if they're talking about the basic how the flag looks, come on man, the Canadian flag is absolutely beautiful man, it's so unique. It represents Canada so well, man, and with the backstory that I mentioned before with the red, uh, paying respect to fallen soldiers and the white for peace. It has great meaning as well. So I'm a big fan of the Canadian flag, and the American flag is a really great flag as well, similar to here in Malaysia. 18. Actually. 
Canadians put more emphasis on higher education. Actually, Canada puts more emphasis on it than any other country in the world. It leads the OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, with 53% of the population having a college education. The OECD average is 32%. Mm. 17. And yeah, that's what I mentioned at the start about from my, uh, my learning and education about Canada through these videos that Canada itself is a highly educated country and you can see it's like it could potentially be the most educated country in the world. Uh, depends on the factors that you take into account in making that judgment, I guess. Uh, but tell me if that has any sort of negative side effect as well. Of course, it's great that everybody's more educated and again with things like innovation that can make that that easier in countries like this but can it also make it more competitive in the job market and things like where everybody's got similar education levels it might make it harder for people to get jobs but again that also depends on the avail availability of jobs as well tell me what you think about that the good points and bad points of having such a, a high level of education. Canadians generally approve of their government. Americans hate and distrust theirs. This boils down to the fact that the Canadians see government as a good thing, while Americans see it as a necessary evil. Mm. Again, it's very hard to make, it's, it's difficult or for me, to, for him to make such generalizations, it is, uh, it's hard to understand because I, I, I know that a lot of people might share that viewpoint in each country, but I'm sure there's people in Canada who distrust the, the government. Like, for instance, over the last couple of years, uh, I've seen things go viral about in Canada where, like, I think it was the truck trucker prote protest and things like that, especially during that COVID time. It seemed that in Canada there was, like, more anti-government sentiment. But again, I'm only taking like headlines and reading certain parts that are like small articles and that. I don't actually live there to understand what's really going on. So tell me if, if you're from Canada, how is that, how's that manifested itself over the last couple of years? Is there like a growing distrust of the government or is it just a d growing distrust of this government in particular rather than government as a, uh, like an idea or concept? 16. Americans are more individualistic. This goes back to the Wild West mentality. The very word Canada, on the other hand, is derived from a local Iroquoian word for village. Mm. Canadians are more communally minded. Fifth. Yeah, I would agree with that based on what I've read so far, like Canada, and I mean, if you look at places like New Finland, where I've learned about the people are very community spirited and community driven. Uh, but I would imagine in the USA there's certain areas, cities, regions where that's applicable too. Uh, but it's interesting you even look at like the name of Canada, how I, I learned that also, and it really shows the, the, the nature of Canadians also. Uh, it's interesting that, that that's never changed to becoming more individual and caring about themselves. Uh, tell me like, in general if you agree with these points that this person's making or not. Team. Canada's right wing is America's left wing. In the political sense, Canadian politics tend to be more liberal. This doesn't mean that Canada doesn't have conservative politics. It certainly does. The political system is a lot less polarized, however, mm. and doesn't pull to the extremes as much. It has five primary political parties. For yeah, I, and I think that also can, can le lean into that, that part about the people being educated. I think that the fact that so many Canadians are educated, it allows them to be a bit more fair and a bit more uh, even-handed when it comes to making decisions based or politically based decisions. Uh, you see in America, maybe the, that lower education means people are more susceptible to fake news and like being manipulated by the media and that sort of thing, which then encourages more extreme viewpoints, whether it's to the right or to the left. Uh, I think it is, for me, I would prefer that Canadian mentality. For me, if you look at, if you talk about my own political opinion and viewpoint, I really don't put myself on, a, on any point of the political spectrum, right or left. I just take it each election, each vote as it comes and make my decision based on like 
the parties at that time and who has the best manifesto and the, just the best people for the job. Uh, I'd be interested to know more about Canadians' uh, viewpoint and how they actually come to decisions politically and stuff like that. Maybe it's more similar to that. 14. Both Americans and Canadians think they're more free. In Canada, this is due to more progressive policies. In the US, it's due to lack of government policies. 13. Americans are more confrontational. Not necessarily in a bad way, but Canadians are more likely to just hold everything in and let it stew. Or apologize. Yeah, again, that, that one is something I've picked up on. Again, things like this, it's can generalize everybody. Can't say every American is uh, more argumentative or want to fight about things. Same way you can't say all Canadians are like just polite and just like take anything. I'm sure there's a lot of strong-willed Canadians who fight their corner. Uh, same with America. Uh, but I guess like if you're going to if you are going to generalize generalize personalities, that's what I've learned 12. so far. Canadians pretend Canada has no problems. America pretends the U.S. just has quirks. Is that true? If you're Canadians, would you say that Canada has no problems? I, I Again, I, I know that's not true for sure because I read all the comments and I just got to say at this point, thank you so much for all your comments. Like, I know I don't reply to every comment, I don't really reply to much, but I really take my time to read everybody's comments. Uh, I get so many comments on my videos and they're so in-depth and I really learn so much from those comments. They're really wonderful, but one thing I learned is Canadians are not just living in uh, in the clouds and overly too, too positive. They're really, they're, there's a lot of realists who will tell me the truth about what they feel about Canada and any things they don't feel happy about, which is great. And that's the only way you can really progress if you have that mindset where you can look at things that are going wrong to make changes and Love so it. Canadians don't get to experience the joys of Pandora and Spotify due to licensing restrictions. Hmm. 10. Is that, is that true? Although Canadians know. do feel quite a bit of connection with their province slash city, Americans identify much more with their state than they do with the country as a whole, except for Quebec, Canada's Texas. None. Canada's Texas? I thought someone told, or people in the comments told me before, I think it's Alberta that is Canada's Texas due to oil and similar industries like that. Uh, tell me if that's true. Quebec, I've never heard mentioned as being like the Texas or right. Canada. Canadians talk about the war. Canadians talk about the War of 1812 a lot. Americans aren't quite sure what that is. Boston Tea Party, anyone? Hey, is that true? Is that maybe just like again going back to education? How Canadians are more educated on history and things like that. Tell me about that. Do, like, if you're from Canada, what sort of things did you learn in history in your school? Is it about Canada, is it more, is it wider, is it things like the World Wars, about America and things like that. Be interested to know the differences between education on specifically history uh, between these two countries, what you learn in school. That's Canadians are more passive aggressive. A good example of this would be tribalism and all of its derivatives. While it's more overt in the US, that doesn't mean it's any less in Canada. It just comes out in a more backhanded fashion. Seven. I mean, maybe that comes from once being a British colony type thing, because British people, I guess, are very passive aggressive in comparison to Americans as well. I know I am. I'm very like, I will never be like, like too confrontational with people. Uh, I'll just like let the like anger inside me just keep it inside me. Uh, I don't know if that's like a similar mentality to Canadians. Canadians brag about how cold it is, while Americans brag about how warm it is. Unless you live in Minnesota, then you're basically Canadian. Six. Americans are much more polarized on almost everything. But then again, there are more people in just California than all of Canada. So it makes sense that Canadians would be more unified. Hmm. Yeah, I guess in a way, but I, also it can be all relative. Like, I think it actually, there's a lot of different factors within America. Like the media, I feel like is a, a huge thing for creating that polarization. And maybe Canada's media is not so 
like split right and left and I feel like the political split in America due to the media it really drives everybody everybody's opinions on a lot of things that are not even political to be very extreme social media I guess has contributed to that as well in my opinion but maybe what is Canada's media like is it as manipulative as the American media seems to be I know Fine. nothing of the Canadian media. In the media, US, actually. talking about American politics is taboo. But in Canada, talking about American politics is a national pastime. Is that true? Then how do... Amer so Americans then, their media, as I mentioned, kind of manipulate them to be more polarized with regards to their political views, but then people just don't talk about it. Is that what it is? Maybe having that discourse would actually make people less extreme in their views. You know, if... if Talking about politics is taboo in America. You have to talk about these things to get different people's opinions and make your opinion, f not just from those opinions, obviously your ed your how you educate yourself and what you read about and things like that, but maybe that's a reason they are so polarized because they don't talk about it. Four, Canadians are more likely to take off their shoes in the house. Of course, this depends on location, but in many parts of the US, walking with shoes in the house is acceptable. Maybe it's the cowboy influence. I mean, that one as well. For me, living in the UK, I always wore my shoes in the house. If they're, Not if they're muddy or wet and things like that. Just if you want a general nice day, you can walk in the house, it's fine. But since I moved to Asia, that's an absolute no-no. I've been brainwashed by my wife that shoes in a house is completely unacceptable. So I, I will never step foot inside my house with a shoe on. Uh, but it's very, that's very it's similar. It's interesting that Canada has that culture, same as Asia, but things like the UK and US don't have that. Uh, tell me if you take your shoes off before you enter Three. every house. Canadians think Canada is completely different from the US. Americans, on the other hand, don't notice much of a difference between the two countries. As a note, from a European perspective, any differences will seem a bit overstated. I guess that's true. from the European perspective. Maybe we, for me anyway, before I really educated myself on Canada and the USA, uh, I would have said that I could have probably noticed some differences. But uh, when I'm watching videos like this, you can see a lot more. And when I'm learning more about the actual cultures and history, I can see differences uh, that other people like might not notice from the outside. But tell me how you see that from Canada. Uh, or America, if you're American, how stark is the difference between these two, two. countries in Europe? Americans have it easier when it comes to shopping online. In Canada, many stores don't offer online shopping, and many of them don't even have a website to begin with. I mean, is this true? Like that and the Spotify point, I just don't see that. Maybe this, I, I don't know when this video was made. Maybe this is outdated now, and I would imagine, especially after COVID that a lot more online shopping would be taking place and things like Spotify would just be very commonplace. Tell me about, tell me more about that. One, Canada has two official languages on a national level, English and French. Americans have no official language on a national level. Each state decides whether or not to adopt English as an official language. Tristan, we should go to Canada one day. I'd love to. Let's do it. You wanna go now? Sure. Yeah, interesting video. There, there's clearly a lot of differences there. Uh, I feel like even with the presenter, maybe some of them were overstated and exaggerated a bit because, yeah, again, there was a lot of generalizations in that video that I just can't see being the case for every single person in both of these countries. Tell me more about your own experiences and your own opinions on this, the points made and raised in this video. Uh, tell me what differences that you see between the two countries that weren't mentioned on this video also. But I just got to say, I'm absolutely loving my education and delving into like everything Canada. It's absolutely fantastic. I feel privileged to learn all of these things uh, and it's going to continue for the foreseeable. So tell me what sort of things you want me to learn about with regards to Canada. It can be absolutely anything. Uh, but... Yeah, just got to say thank you so much for all your comments on my videos and thanks for the subscriptions and everything, all the likes and all that. I really appreciate everything. It means a lot to me. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching.